Hello and welcome to the video lecture associated with the actual use of subqueries as a table or a derived table. Um, we've seen up to this point that you can use a subquery in an in clause in the where in an in using the in operator in the where clause. <laughs> Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to joins. Um, so we're going to treat the subquery as if it was its own table. So we'll, we'll use the, uh, the example we used before um, to make it simpler and easier to remember. Uh, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to create a second query window, and I'm going to type out my SQL. I suggest doing this only because um, when SQL starts to get more complex, you want to do it piece by piece. Uh, it's much like writing code. Uh, when you're writing a program, you want to make sure that when you're writing it, uh, you're testing each little bit as you write it. Uh, nobody just sits down and writes out a whole bunch of code and then uh, spends three days debugging it. Um, you debug it piece by piece, make sure everything works, and then you move on. So in this case, we're going to select a distinct list of customer IDs from the order T table. All right? We run this <coughs> distinct. I love it. I'm gonna learn how to type one of these things, I promise. Anyway, so here is for all intents and purposes a derived table, a logical table. This is going to be run, it's going to be pulled into memory. And as far as the database management system is concerned, this, this record set returned is a logical table or a derived table. So then what we're going to do is we're going to use the SQL from this select statement in another query. So in this case, we're going to select the um, C dot customer ID. I'm aliasing tables. I'll be aliasing the customer table. Um, so that's how we fully qualify it. Again, I don't want to type out customer underscore T all the time. Uh, so when I have multiple tables, I alias. So there's my uh, customer ID. Um, I'm going to bring the customer name. I'm going to bring in customer address, and the, um, in this case, uh, well, I guess nothing from the order table for now. From customer underscore T, alias as C, inner joined to that select statement. Might be easier uh, for you to just put it in line in this case so that you can see that's going to be the result set. So that's select distinct customer ID from order T. I'm going to alias as O, right, since that's the information coming from my order table. And then I'm going to have my on clause, which is where I'm going to join these two together because remember these are two tables. One's logical, one's physical. But as far as the database management, management system is concerned, it doesn't make it, it a difference. So in this case, it's going to be the C dot customer ID equals O dot customer ID. And when I run that, get the same information I got before. However, um, the only information that I have derived in the other table is the customer ID. So there's not a lot that I can do. About the only thing I can display from that inner query would be the customer ID, but I already have that. Um, so uh, we don't need a distinct list. Right? If we wanted to, we can make this a little bit more robust. Uh, so I can bring the customer ID and now I need the customer ID. So in the select statement, I have to have the customer ID because that's what I'm using to join these two tables together. So in the inner query, I have to select the customer ID, but I can select anything else. As a matter of fact, I could just select everything, couldn't I? I could do a select star. 
and then when I run that, I get all my information. But then I would want to add in some more information from O. So I could do uh, O dot customer ID. I can do the order date because that's available now. I could do the um, Oh, what other information is in the order table that I can display? Um, salesperson ID. Right? You can do anything like that. So I run that. That again is going to give me my 58 records. But now I can get much more complicated if I wanted to. Uh, I can do anything in this inner query. Um, so let me put in a where clause. Where order date is less than, hmm, let me take a look at my order information to see what a good date would be to use. Um, huh, I'll just make it one slash one slash 2010. I run that. So now we see the information only associated with orders before a particular date. And this is more, now this is going to be more efficient than just linking the tables together because remember, if I'm linking the tables together first, right, so if this, if the phone clause was customer interjoined order and then I put in the where clause, um, I'm still going to bring all that information into memory and then I'm going to filter out rows. Where in this case, I'm very specifically selecting the information from the order table that I want to join to customer. Okay, so you, you have to understand that if, if the record sets are smaller that I'm joining together, they're going to be more efficient. And that is the end of the video lecture uh, on using derived tables in SQL.